In 1 Kings chapter 17, we find a prophet of God who's hiding by a brook in the wilderness. He had prophesied a drought in the land of Israel, and now he's at the top of King Ahab's most wanted list. So he's all by himself. He's all alone in the wilderness without food to eat. And Elijah the prophet, he's waiting patiently on God's promise of provision. And all at once, he hears the fluttering of wings. And we could ask the question, was this an angel bringing him his food? And you Bible readers will already know that the answer is, it was not an angel. It was an ugly old raven or ravens, as we'll read in just a minute. A dinner had just been served by some ugly old ravens. And this story, this particular story, has baffled a lot of scholars because it, it's it's so strange for them to think that this type of bird would be sent to feed the prophet. And some have even tried to interpret the original meaning uh, to be merchants or Arabians. But in studying, I found that most Bible scholars agree that the original word, Arab, does refer to that dirty old bird that we imagine. So let's let's read this story real briefly in, in 1 Kings chapter 17, starting at verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Now, as I've read this story over the years, I'm sure you've, you've had the same question as I have that why couldn't God have sent manna down for Elijah like he did for the children of Israel? And, and why couldn't he have sent an angel like we read over in chapter 19? And if you'll remember in chapter 19, Elijah was making his way to Horeb, the mountain of God. And during this time, an angel had prepared a cake for him and he had a, a cruise of water prepared for him. And in fact, twice we read where the angel had did this. So, why was why was God providing for Elijah in this way, in this unexpected way? Well, we can go beyond even this story of Elijah, and we know that the Bible is full of examples where God performed his will and sent his blessings in so many unexpected ways. And if I've learned anything personally from my walk with the Lord, it's this, that God is constantly working and maturing our faith and so many times he'll meet our needs in ways that baffle our human reasoning and another thing that i've learned that has been so vital to me in my walk in my christian journey it's that when you can't understand him when you can't understand god it doesn't mean you can't trust god and a lot of times we're busy trying to figure everything out from our earthly limited perspective but while we're so busy worrying and fretting over over the situation god is working not just on the situation he's concerned about the situation but more importantly he's concerned about you and me so when you see god working in unexpected ways be mindful of that that he is working on your situation but in the unexpected he's he's doing something deep inside of us Back in the 1970s, there was a young man in Vietnam by the name of Hyen Pham, and he had been a devout Buddhist all of his life, but an American soldier gave him a Bible and witnessed to him about Jesus. So Hyen gave his heart to the Lord, and he became a devout Christian. And so he went on to serve as a translator for the Americans, and because he, he was very proficient in English, he also became a translator for several missionary groups that would come to Vietnam. But 
when Vietnam fell into the communist hands and became a communist government, Hyen was arrested and thrown into prison. And the communist goal, he said the communists, the, their, their full intentions was to erase his belief in God. So they began to torture him both physically and mentally, and they confiscated his Bible. They replaced it with the Communist Manifesto, which was written by an atheist, Karl Marx. And after a year of this constant torture, Hyen said his faith began to crack as he started doubting that God would ever answer his prayers for release. And one night in desperation, Hyen said, God, maybe you're, maybe you're not out there at all. He said, I've reached the end of my faith and I'm giving up hope. So he said, tomorrow when I wake up, I'm not going to pray anymore. That's how that's how low this devout Christian had got to after all those countless sessions of torture. So the next morning, he was ordered to clean the prison bathrooms. And he said this was a filthy, humiliating task, and we could all understand why. And he said this was designed to break him down even farther. So he said he wrapped a handkerchief around his nose and his mouth, and he started this long day of cleaning. And as he worked, he, he said he saw a scrap of paper down in the waist, and he said he noticed that there were some words that were written in English. And so his eyes were drawn to that piece of paper, and at the top, he seen the words, Romans 8. And he said tears began to flow down his face as he can he could see what the words were among all the all the filth and I, I know this is plain but just hear me here he said he, he could see the words and he started to read and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose he said he began to read who can separate us from the love of christ Shall tribulation or distress or persecution? He said, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the words that Hyen started reading in the in the most unlikely, unexpected place where he felt so low in his faith. And you can read more about his story. It's miraculous how the Lord helped him to escape from Vietnam. And this story, it touches me so deeply because, friends, I've seen too many things in my lifetime to doubt the faithfulness of of God and has he always answered my prayers the way I thought he would the way I expected absolutely not has he ever failed to meet the need a million times no he's always been faithful even in the unexpected so can I encourage you today to start looking for God in the unexpected places there's blessings right now I believe with all my heart there's blessings he's sending your way that you may not even recognize right now. So could we pray as we close this devotion today? I hope God's increased your faith to see him in the unexpected. Can we pray together? Lord, I thank you for the privilege that we have to spend this time together. I pray that those that have heard these stories, I pray their faith has been increased, but not only their faith, Lord, I pray that they'll start to see you in the unexpected, in the things that right now they don't understand why they're going through the situations they're going through. I pray you will strengthen their faith. Help them to see you in ways they've never saw you before. Help them, Lord, to share your goodness with others that others can be strengthened by what they're going through right now. Lord, thank you for the privilege that we have to call upon your name and help us to look for you in the unexpected. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.